A uh, couple of minutes late, we had some technical difficulties. Uh, always fun when your computer decides to mess about with your sound drivers. Anyway, we're... Well, I don't know. Something's not quite looking right here. I'm, pretty, I, I'm sure I remember the console version of Diablo 3 looking better than this. Yeah, something doesn't quite seem right. Hold on while I... Uh, maybe I didn't get all the settings working properly. Yeah, something doesn't just something seems a bit off and I don't know quite what. Yeah, hold on, let's see if we can fix this, see if we can fix this. See if we can fix. Ah, that's better. Yeah, I don't know what happened there. It was like, phew, almost like it'd been taken back over well, well, almost 25 years or so. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure one person watching this will be thinking, wait a minute, he's not seriously going to try to sit there and play Diablo 1 for the PlayStation, is he? No, I'm not. Hello, everyone. Uh... Apologies for the daft joke to begin uh, the stream off with. Hold on while I switch this over. Bring the sound up here. So, we're playing Diablo. Uh, and I keep looking over here at the screen when it's not. The camera's over here. Hello. So, uh, I'm playing Diablo. Well, Diablo 3. Uh, I was having trouble deciding what I was going to play tonight. Uh, I'm going to start streaming hopefully twice a week, and the second stream is going to be Assassin's Creed Syndicate. So I was trying to figure out what tonight was going to be, and then uh, I was chatting with my old friend Scott last night, and he mentioned Diablo. And I suddenly thought, oh, now that's one of the two games I'm very close to getting the Platinum Trophy on. Now there's an idea. So... We're going to be playing Diablo. We're going to be going for the Platinum eventually. But this involves defeating Diablo in hardcore mode. Defeating Malthiel in hardcore mode. And getting to level 70 in hardcore mode. Which, yay, Simon's got video this week. So... I'm going to start a new character in hardcore mode. Uh, I might as well do... Can you do hardcore season? I've never actually tried. Well, we shall find out together. I did a pre-check to check the volume levels beforehand and everything seemed hunky-dory on the test video. Even when uh, everything was... Uh, Shooting off with my ridiculous wizard build here. So, we're going. Oh, yeah, that's good, right? I'll just. I will do a seasonal hardcore hero then. Fate hero. I am, of course, going wizard! Hardcore seasonal hero. Well, here we go. Yeah, permanent death seasonal. The highest I've gotten in hardcore mode is level 10, but that wasn't due to death, that was just I never got any further. Now we're going to call a name that will strike fear into the heart of our enemies. Tim. 
so one adventure mode because uh, by this point I think everyone's been through the story of Diablo and to be honest I've been through it that many times I don't think I could handle it again so adventure mode act one I am playing on normal depending on how things go I might up it a little bit but I'd rather kind of play it safe and uh, stick on normal than uh, push things too far and end up uh, absolutely just dying on my ass. So just double checking that this is all okay. And also I've had a good session back in the PS4 version. Uh, because I've been playing the Switch version for the last 18 months. So I'd kind of gotten used to how the buttons were on that version. But it didn't take long to get the hang of the PS4 buttons again. So cross fingers should be okay there. So here we go. Now. I've dug up some new things for you to take a look at. We're going to take Bad News Korvac with us. Lead the way, because I've always kind of found the tanks the best for from using the Demon Hunter or the Wizard. I have a build. I have a couple of builds I'm going to kind of try and aim for, but it really depends on what gear we get. But I've a nice build that's done well in uh, on higher difficulties. So if I manage to get the bits, then... Brilliant. Now I'm just checking. Okay, so I'm going to leave that one till last because it's a proper boss. We'll do the cemetery first. Come on, skeletons. We'll just have a couple shops just so I can shoot something also it was odd going back to the ps4 version because there were certain pets and things i hadn't gotten back in this one but uh, i'm actually thinking i'm just going to stick with the ps4 version now can uh I need to clear a bit of space on my switch anyway, so that's 13 gig cleared off. <laughs> and also just in general the, the PS4 controller is a lot more comfy for long Diablo sessions. But this isn't actually the only Diablo run I'm doing at the moment. I'm also doing a, a normal season run with the Demon Hunter uh, to get the Natalia's Vengeance armor set. Because I do have one of the Hadrig's gift armor sets for my Demon Hunter, but it does not suit my playstyle at all. Just on the current rotation, it's like the one that's like, no, we'll go for that one. Okay, and I'll need to wait for the rotation to get back to the the good Monk and Crusade armor sets, because although I've got them on Switch, I don't have them here. This is probably along this along with Skyrim is my most played console Grave game. Robbers have defiled my tomb. Now my husband writhes in torment because I do not rest at his side. Return my bones so that we may rest in peace. What we don't we?
I don't have enough arcane power. Ah yes, that uh, crazy cold freezy beam is uh you're going to be seeing that a lot. I used to always go with disintegrate, but I've been trying out some slightly different builds. And Ray of Frost has a lower cost to keep it going, so I've just been been trying things out and it's been working out well so far. You know your build's doing well when you go into a room and defeat the Butcher on Torment 8 in like two seconds. My old masters could see me now. And it's also interesting hearing uh, how all the, the taunts and shouts sound in the, the male wizard's voice. Because I'm so used to playing the, the female wizard. Which is a uh, Grey Delisle. That's the, I am just going to... Yeah, the gamma, the brightness just seemed a little low. Because I believe I've probably changed televisions actually since last time I played this on PS4. So, uh, because we're in adventure mode, we can just bounce around. Go back. Just do the bounties, get XP, build ourselves up. So yeah, my first taste of Diablo was the PlayStation 1 version back in the day. Uh, it took up 10 slots on a 15 slot memory card. Uh, people say it was, you know, there was a lot of sacrifices compared with the PC version, but I'd never played the PC version at that point, so I had nothing to compare it to, I just really enjoyed it. And uh, it led me to, well, Diablo I 1 and 2 on the PC power. eventually. And the first two Dungeon Siege games. And I've always kind of liked this style of game, but there weren't that many really good ones on consoles up until the Xbox 360. Well, I say that, no, uh, there was the Baldur's Gate game, Dark Alliance games on PS2 and things like X-Men Legends and uh, Justice League Heroes, Champions of Norath, the Bard Scale reboot and I really enjoyed all of those but they weren't quite the Diablo experience I was looking for. So when a really good version of Diablo 3 came out on Xbox 360, I was all over that. I bought it on disc, then I bought the re-release on disc, then I bought the re-release digitally, then it was one of the first games I bought on the PS4 on disc, and then I bought it digitally as well, and then I bought the Switch version because I know I maybe thought having Diablo on the go would be really handy, but really I never really played it on the go much. And the one time I did recently, I got travel sick. <laughs> Need more arcane power. I could do that again. Ooh, I just just thought of something. We don't have a pet equipped. Let's equip a pet. I'll go for malfeasance because I don't have. There's a couple I would like rather equip, but I don't have them on the PS4. So. <laughs> okay, no. 
that's Frost Nova. That's good. That'll be useful against uh, Queen of Atnea. Can we not? Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Oh no, come on, come on, come on. I can't no. I really hate these guys. I need arcane power. Right, okay. I'll be telling stories about that for a while. I mean, I think a, a dead light was the the actually Diablo actually automatically changed like the font sizes and things between uh, console and handheld modes. Which was nice. Uh, you, you had no trouble reading things even on the, the portable screen. And performance wise, it really held up. As is always the case with these things, is oh, PC. I don't have enough. There's people who didn't own the Switch version. Oh, they've cut, they've cut down on the number of monsters. They've done this, they've done that. Yeah, no, they hadn't. Need more arcane power. Having put dozens of hours into Xbox 360, PS4. And switch versions, I can safely say I did not feel they made any major not changes to the switch version. It plays just as well as the PS4 and Xbox 360 versions. Okay, one enemy left, and they're down here, the poor person. Oh, I was, yeah, I was, what? Yeah, safe to say I was not expecting him. I don't have enough arcane power. Okay, I am going to go back to the village. But a nice thing with wizards is it doesn't actually matter hugely what sort of weapon you've actually got in your hand. Uh, it's not like the demon hunter where if you don't have a crossbow or a bow equipped, uh, things go very, 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 very badly indeed. Those. Just going to have a look, see what Got you've right got. Of for you this time, yeah, no, what I've got is higher than those right now. So next, four of them survivors or. Go for the survivors first. Just have a 
check on my skills, magic missile. Yeah, first. First Nova. Yep. Yeah. Sorted there. Oh. Slate follower. Yeah, so I was surprised to find out. Uh, in the Eastern Kingdom of Hejistan, oh, well I right. heard rumors of Zakarum warriors called Crusaders. While the natives were most reticent, I Need was able to deduce that this order was founded 200 years ago, just as Rakis took his army of paladins west. But these Crusaders went east on a very different mission. Yes, me and Simon always uh, joked that uh, Korvac sounded like a uh, the wrestler Wade Barrett. So that's uh, we call him Bad News Korvac. But it's actually uh, Dominic Keating who was in uh, Star Trek Enterprise. And I would not have guessed that. There's a, there's a few other voices I instantly recognise like Jen Hale and uh, David McCallum briefly. There's a couple of scrolls you pick up and immediately I'm like, oh, that's David McCallum. It's a little bit weird going back to a completely non boosted character and actually having to worry about I didn't think I could get any better. And actually kind of worry about death. Because <laughs> the death penalty in Diablo 3 really normally is really nothing. I mean, is it hit that yet? But if it works, it works. Okay, follow that other arrow. The main thing I'm worried about is getting caught in the middle of a mob of stuff, but I'm gonna mitigate that slightly. Uh, I never used to use teleport, but I'm gonna keep it as one of my skills just. As a nice backup to have. So if I do get surrounded, I can get out of there quickly. <coughs> oh, excuse me. I need arcane power. Okay, this is going to be a roundabout one, is it?
yeah, really, the Xbox 360 was where I kind of really got into the style of game in a big way. There was a few fun ones like uh, Crimson Alliance, uh, Dungeon Siege 3 was okay. There's one called Realms of Ancient War on Xbox Live Arcade that was alright, but didn't. It was good to start with, but it became very samey. And there was also the port of Sacred 2, which was rather clunky, but okay. And then uh, Sacred 3, which wasn't really an RPG at all, but an, an action game. Well, right, I've done that so I can go here now and go to the Southern Highlands. Oh, no, no problem, Scott. I was, uh, I was, uh, I went back to my old ridiculous wizard build just to kind of get used to the control layout of the PS4 version uh, again. And yeah, I got a few, I got a few goodies on my way there. Yeah, to give you an idea of what my kind of current wizard build is like, I'm on Torment 8 and if things go right I can take out the Butcher in two seconds. So yes, there was those those few games on the 360, but then the the PS4 is when I started to find some really good alternatives. Uh, I'll wait until I've gotten rid of this spider. Yeah, there's a... Uh, oops. Get back here, you. Luckily, you're going down the way I've already been, so there's no surprise spiders down here. Yeah, the butcher can take a while if you start and when you're back at a low level. Uh, I was half expecting him to be the, the main boss I'd need to take on on this bounty. But uh, it's Queen. It's the Queen Spider. Yeah, on the, on the PlayStation power. 4. Oh, also on the 360, there was a really good port of Torchlight, which was by a bunch of ex Diablo devs, and it was a lot of fun. I just remembered that because uh, the PS4 and Switch both have excellent ports of Torchlight 2. It's uh, a lot of fun. But there's also the Incredible Adventures of Van Helsing games, which in which while well, you play a Van Helsing and it has just a lot of a nice sense of humour and character to it and there's Victor Van which is a bit more actiony but uh, has an awesome expansion it's all based around Motorhead then there's the two Warhammer ones there's Warhammer Chaos Bane which is the fantasy universe and Inquisitor Mata, which I played a bit of last week, which is the Space Marine version. And then there's one called Vikings Wolves of Midgard that I got for about a fiver in a sale that is, is okay, but not one I'd recommend unless you're really desperately short of Diablo likes to play. <laughs> Got 
because it's been interesting the way in which other games have taken on aspects of Diablo, mainly the loot system. The, I mean, the latest Assassin's Creed game, Odyssey, has like loot varieties and like stat boosts and everything. And even a uh, Gundam Vaker feels very Diablo y in that you're getting all the parts and getting stat boosts and abilities off of them. I like Korvac, he's probably my favourite of the, the sidekicks. That's mainly because I tend to go for the ranged characters and having a tank as your sidekick is, seems to work best for them. Okay, we'll go around this way. So, anyone, anyone of you? joined in a little late. What we are doing is uh, Diablo on adventure mode but hardcore because I only need three trophies to get the platinum and you need to be playing hardcore to get those trophies. the leap packs that I'm really most proud about at the moment. I need arcane power. I had a bit of a heavy moment with it one a bit earlier, but we're doing okay. Just check if there's any yeah magic missile. Add that then Cold blood reduces the cost, which is good for the build I'm aiming for. I have a horrible feeling we're going to have to go really around and around and around and around to get to the boss here, but it doesn't matter. It's all it's all leveling up. Yes, I have a wizard build I always aim for. My studies indicate that a high-level cleric of the Zakarun named Akan began to sense the corruption that was eating away at the heart of his faith. He knew this corruption would eventually destroy his beloved church, and that he must take action. After much prayer, Akan hit upon the idea of an order of crusaders. I don't like this, I do not like this at all. Yeah, that exact situation is what I'm most worried about, is just getting surrounded. But once I get teleport as an ability, I will can worry slightly less about that. Okay, what have we got in there? Diamond skin. That actually is usually what I use. So we'll switch to that. Yeah, so Diablo 3 and Skyrim are the two games this console generation and last that I've played the most. 
I know I was well over 300 hours on Diablo 3 and that was just the 360 and PS4 versions. I had the Switch version onto that as well for the last 18 months and who knows what that's at now. One of the games that kind of came close were Marvel Heroes Omega before it got shut down and uh, Destiny 1 and 2 and Monster Hunter. They're probably the only other ones I've done more than 100 hours in. And Monster Hunter, I'm at 100, 176 hours. Okay, that's a faster attack, that'll do it. Better armor. We'll stick with that, we'll put that on. And 60. A okay. well deserved death. <laughs> that's it, Korvac, you tell them. Okay, right, wait a minute. <laughs> Take care of any enemies that are already around here. Okay, it's a kill a hundred enemies, one. thought yeah before I, before I deleted Diablo off the switch I could actually check and it would have told me how many hours I put into it. I believe it was about 120 or so. But yeah I was needing to free some space up on the switch and since I was coming back to the PS4 version of Diablo it was a uh, Quite an easy choice to make. As well as I mentioned earlier, Portable Diablo had sounded like a really good idea. Then the one time I tried to play it while we were on a train, I got very, very nauseous and almost threw up. And it's weird because it's the first time that's ever happened to me. I've never had that problem with like the 3DS or the DS or the Game Boy or anything or the PlayStation Portable. So I don't know if it was just Diablo or not ready yet. You just stay over there. No, let me get out of there. But again, thanks to Scott for just mentioning Diablo in a chat last night and think me that set me thinking, ooh, wait, there's some stuff I hadn't done this season. And yeah, I still hadn't decided what I was playing tonight. I'd been testing a few things out to try and decide, but uh, Far Cry 5 might have been 
No, 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 no. Yeah, I was seriously thinking about Far Cry 5 just because of the hilarity that was happening when I played it the other night. But since I'm going to be playing Assassin's Creed Syndicate on my second weekly stream, I thought I don't want to be playing two Ubisoft games. As awesome as they are. Right, now it is just this, which is where I'd actually intended to go the last time. I intended to leave that to last, but there we go. So the kind of the first full boss taken out there and was it too much of a problem? Yeah, we will take that and that. Uh, oh, yep, map boost intelligence. Always a good thing. And yeah, we don't need any boosting strength, so... Alright, oh, that's a two-handed. Well, I'll tell you what, what we will do is, we will go back to the village. Salvage what we well no not everything. Salvage that and that. Yeah, we'll equip the wand. It's not Yeah, because it's more damage and faster attack, so salvage everything else. Okay, we can't make a focus yet. Yeah, not really worth making anything yet. But that's fine. I don't have any blood chance to do it. Nope. Okay, back we go. And this is the thing, I'm not I'm, I'm used to kind of starting a new character every season, so it's kind of starting from the beginning again. But this is the first time I've did it with the worry that death is permanent. <laughs> well we're doing not too bad so far. Yeah, damage output has gone up a nice decent amount now. actually been playing most of this week. Well, I was playing a bit of Assassin's Creed 3 Remastered. Uh, did the first couple of chapters of that. I uh, was playing a bit of Assassin's Creed Syndicate, which is what was making me think, oh, I might just restart this and stream it from the start. Because it's kind of between it and Black Flag as to which is my favourite Assassin's Creed and Syndicate just beats Black Flag out because of the Victorian London setting okay, I think getting a bit hairy, run away, run away did another few hours of Final Fantasy 7 Remake. I'm in the wall market just now. Uh, on my way 
to in a little bit at least meet Don Corneo. But there's I'm doing a whole bunch of extra stuff before that. Got a couple more summons. One of which was expected. One of which wasn't. <laughs> and I had a good laugh when that summon I wasn't expecting showed up. And it was interesting how I got those summons. It worked a bit like Final Fantasy Explorers. And that you have a boss battle against them. And if you beat them you get the summon. Which was a nice slightly different way of doing it. Well, I say slightly different, slightly different compared with uh, the original Final Fantasy VII. I mean, Final Fantasy VIII, thirteen, both had the defeat them and they become yours thing. And then I was playing a bit of Far Cry because I was considering streaming one of those. And that led to me near ending myself laughing a couple of times. Because I hadn't played Far Cry 5 in a good six months or so. And forgot which shoulder button. Ah, the pet. The pet uh, actually picks up gold. So you don't always have to go and get it. But apart from that, it's purely just a cosmetic thing. And just... It's a bit like in like uh, the pets and like massive multiplayer online games. It's just kind of, yeah, I've got this pet. I want that pet to follow me around. I don't have the pet I would normally have with a wizard here because I didn't unlock them on PS4. I had a floating, s well, this is a floating skeleton thing. I had a floating skull. And a uh, queen of the succubi. And uh, uh, a furry yeti dude on uh, my Switch account. <laughs> yeah, apart from just picking up gold occasionally, it's just a, it's like the wings and the. It's like the wings and the parents. It's purely just a. Uh, cosmetic thing. So yeah, I've gotten some parents from doing stuff in previous seasons, but I never usually equip those. But this is, of course, if you're not playing a pet summoning class. Uh, though the pet, their pets operate completely differently. In fact, after kind of ranged attacks, uh, pet summoning classes are usually what I go with next in a game. I'm looking forward to picking up the expansion for Warhammer Inquisitor at the end of the month because they've added a new class and it's a, a summoning class. You can summon extra little robot dudes who will attack enemies and do stuff. And the Necromancer in Diablo, depending on how you build and set them up, can be absolutely ridiculous. Now this is a problem because if I go up further that way, that's the northern highlands, I think, and it wouldn't count if I killed enemies. Yeah, because of this changes to... Oh, no. Okay, we'll try going... Oh, there's quite a big area over there. I wish it was running a bit faster. Actually, I know what I can do. Ha ha ha! Actually, no, it wouldn't be any quicker, really. <laughs> And I always just like having a pet about, 
even if they don't actually do anything. Uh, one of my favourites actually is the game Fantasy Life on the 3DS. Uh, you could get pet, pet cats and dogs and have them come with you. Oh yeah, I can do that. So, if we look here, big number on a weapon is the damage. Uh, you'll get your extra stats underneath, so this wand has plus 1 to 2 damage. Reduces all the resource cost by 5%. That's always a good thing to have with a wizard. And then it'll tell you the normal damage it does, the attacks per second, and this is a level 5 item and the item type magic wand. Oh, your armor bit's 15, that's the armor rating. And basically the bigger the number, just the better. Yeah, uh, I mean, I've got, just thinking about my other wizard, I've got a few bits of equipment where I've got two versions and although one's a higher level, the actual armor of it is less, but some of its other stats are slightly better because of the whole randomization to it. I'm trying to see if I've actually got, yeah, it's all level one as well. Yeah, in general, normally the higher the level, the higher the armor, but there can be a wildly different armor rating on things. Uh, and just in the random stats, it can you can have a wild difference between them. It just depends. There. If we find, do I have a bit of? Ah, he will have a bit of gold stuff, and also the the color uh, can make a bit of a difference as well. It goes from green to blue to yellow to yeah to gold. I to remember like up. <laughs> I've been pl I've been playing Borderlands 3 recently as well, and it's got slightly more colours to it. Uh, so yeah, uh, white is just common. Blue is uh, magic, and we'll have one extra stat to it, so that one's got plus three strength. Yellow is rare, and I'll have normally two or three extra little boosts to it and then legendary items are the kind of orange ones orange gold and they are most of them have a unique ability to them that is if you get the right combination can uh, just make your character absolutely ridiculously overpowered and if I get the right stuff, I will be able to show you that. In fact, what I might do, maybe 10 minutes before I finish tonight, I will switch over to my current wizard build and show you what I mean by that. And also, at some point, I will grab the cube and I will explain the cube because the cube is also very useful. Yeah, that's what was confused me. I was kind of thinking, no, there is green, isn't there? But then, but no, that's the, yeah. So yes, a green, you will see perfectly when I show my other wizard before the end of the stream. Because uh, 
that wizard has uh, six pieces of the Talvasha armor set and those sets give you different extra bonuses depending on how many bits you have equipped normally it's like if you've got two bits equipped you get this boost if you've got four bits equipped you get this boost as well and if you've got six bits equipped you get three different boosts and some of those boosts in combination with the legendary powers yeah uh, killing the butcher in two seconds on torment eight is what you end up with <laughs> oh that's good mate i've killed enough enemies there so i'm going back to new tristram Your deeds should be rewarded. Please, take this. You have finished all the bounties here, but more await you in other lands. Eh, hey, give me my stuffs. And this is another reason I love going through adventure mode rather than the story again, because every time you complete the five bounties in a zone, you get this chest, which gives you stuff. If I pick all that up, have a look here. So that gives me three plans for things that the blacksmith can build. And they're all legendary or set items. And again, just always have a quick look and check if I've got better equipment I can equip. I don't have any blood shards though. Oh, I've got 10 blood shards. But really, yeah, I want to get... Yeah, I want to get enough blood shards and start buying mystery orbs. Because there is a mystery orb I would like to get that has an ability that is uh, crucial to the build I usually make up. So, on to zone 2 now. Right, Belial will leave till near the end the, the shrouded moors first I've been here alone for a while now mind if I join you vicious hounds roam the northern moors in Kedistan mysterious beasts have been sighted in the check my skills with then I need to change here not there first, diamond skin. Whoever first. No, that's Lands all good right now. Glen. Some say they are part man and part wolf. But I have not been able to confirm it with my own eyes. Whatever their origin, the destruction they leave in their wake suggests that we are right to fear the worst. Yeah, you're going to see a lot of the sit points dodging about using the right stick. At the end of the day, a lot of Diablo is basically just finding a bunch of stuff, messing about with it, seeing if it works or not. Not, obviously, don't do that when you're in hardcore mode, but <laughs> if you're playing normally, just, you know, you see something and wonder, oh, wonder if that'll help. Just give it a try. And if it works, it works. If it doesn't, just go back, change back to something else or give something else a try. And there's also boosting stuff with jewels, which we will get to at some point. And they can make... It can also make a considerable difference to any build you've got going. I go here so they've got to get across this bridge to get to me, so single file please. Be 
yeah, you'll get some items that have sockets in them. And eventually you'll get gems. Uh, and you can slot gems into those just to boost uh, specific stats. Or once you get to the end game and start doing greater rifts, uh, you'll get legendary gems which do all sorts of interesting things. Destroying things like that. I've seen these cultists around. I think they serve a powerful role. Yeah, it's probably going to show up right now. Again, get to the narrow point so they can't just all hit me at once. Yeah, I know on one of my characters I've got two shields at the same item level, but there's about a 300 or 400 level uh, number difference in how much actual armor they've got. It's shields on, I think it's my Crusader. But one of them has a different stat boost that kind of makes up for the... And... And something useful actually, uh, here, if you're on this screen, the inventory screen, you'll see there's a sword, a shield, and I think that's a health thing. Yeah, it's vitality. And this will actually change in real time as you change equipment. So if I equip the old apprentice's wand, see the attack goes down to five. But if a have the strong one it'll go to 22 so that just really quickly lets you tell whether an item's going to boost your attack your defense or the other one which is either health or resistances i think it's health for instance yeah difference in 19 and 20 armor only makes four difference in that stat, but it's a nice, just quick way of telling whether an item's gonna, at just the most basic level, help you. Now, did I unlock any different skills to do there? Diamond skin. No, ah, but I have unlocked this. Now, what have we got at the moment? So, yes, eventually you unlock four passive skills, and they also just make little differences to what you're doing yeah that was just a general decrease damage taken i'll take that just now it's not what i normally take but y your build kind of evolves as you gain levels so go to I'm just checking the names because if I see one that's actually a boss name, it's like, yeah, leave that one till a bit, till uh, last. So, we're seventh of the way there to the level 70. Just think, technically, <laughs> technically, I could go and try and take it on Diablo right now, but with the current setup, not a good idea. Yes, whenever anything's about to explode like that, get away from it. Unless you've got a specific item that actually converts, does something like convert fire damage into uh, your primary resource. I like items like that. There's one in Borderlands 3 that converts any shock electric damage uh, to shield boost and there's one boss who basically 
does 90% electric attacks. So even if you've got a low level version of the shield, uh, just equipping it uh, makes him a bit of a cakewalk. Because Borderlands is very much what if Diablo was a first person shooter. And Destiny has kind of done the same thing, but uh, in a bit of a different way. Neither, neither of them have done it wrong, put it like that. They're both excellent games. But I kind of... I slightly prefer the sheer randomness of the gun, some of the guns you can get in Borderlands. Like uh, earlier this week, just while testing out some stuff, I got a shotgun in Borderlands 3 that fires off five uh, spinning buzz saws along the ground that bounce off walls several times before exploding when they hit something. Oh, actually, I'll have mine too. We'll have to check, check what Zer's selling this weekend in Destiny. Maybe he's got any of the exotics I don't have. Just quickly pop in and visit him and pick up what I don't have. I thought I was going to get back on Destiny with this season, but I kind of fell off it quite quickly again. I think maybe because I think I, I, I overdid things maybe a bit during the season of the Undying and played a bit too much. I'm maybe not quite ready to go back to it for any proper amount of time yet. Especially when there was a Monster Hunter event on, and there's currently a Borderlands 3 event on. At least the Borderlands 1 lasts about 6 weeks, so there's no huge rush to get in there and try and get everything done at once. This is the bits I always hate in games when you're like, I need this many more enemies. Where are the enemies? And you end up roaming all over the map trying to find them. My mother told me not to join the Mage's army. I should have listened. In the morning they're sending the infantry against the Vigeri. I don't know how we're supposed to survive. Maybe we're not. So beautiful here. Maybe if I hid in the trees, they wouldn't notice I was gone. Okay, I did get a new skill there, but I've got arcane orb, but no, I don't. I don't like arcane orb. Yeah, I think, I just think it's maybe gotten a little bit too grindy at the moment. Because there's been, oh, they did all these towers and stuff, and the next phase is, 
Oh, do more of these towers. I don't know what I feel like, kind of, but like, no, we're, sitting, we're bored of the towers. But it's one of these ones, that's, it's always going to be there for me to go back to and just have a quick run on, if I ever feel like it, so... Because I completely missed the Guardian games, whatever that was. I only found out about it after it had started, and I, was, I had no idea what it actually was. <laughs> but it's a, I think it's a little bit of a problem these days with so many what they call live service games kind of all after your time and you've only got a certain amount of time because I see, seem to recall at one point last year I had like months on a Borderlands Overwatch and Destiny 2 all doing events at the same time and I was like no stop <laughs> could be a mess all right I've got no number of enemies I need there we go let's be yapping so much that I've, I've, I've lose attention to what I'm doing so ancient waterway now Yeah, I think Warframe possibly had an event on at the same time. But again, Warframe's one where I'm like, I'll go back to it once every so often just to see what's going on. And I played it enough, I don't regret the buying one of the prime packs for it at all. Heck, I've, I've... Oh! Thank you for reminding me. I kind of almost forgot about that. Yeah, I'll need to play some Tetris 99 this weekend to get the Animal Crossing skin. Yeah, on the whole at the moment I'm like, no, just give 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 me stuff with a decent amount of either an, a nice big open world with just lots of single player stuff I can do. Or stuff like Gundam Breaker, this and uh Monster Hunter. So just, you know, short little short little maps and missions I can do. Just dip in for half an hour if I want to or play for a whole evening if I feel like it and always feel I'm at least making some sort of progress with it yeah who would have thought after so many years of not having decent console versions of Tetris now we've got two of them two good ones on the PS4 and two good ones on the Switch Still looking for him. Need more time. 
And another little thing is normally I wouldn't be playing with a little health bar above my head. But because I kind of need to pay a little bit more attention. <laughs> I've got it turned on here. Yeah, one of the first games I picked up on the Switch was uh, Puyo Puyo Tetris, which is good because it's got te good versions of Tetris and Puyo Puyo, and this was before they released uh, Tetris 99. And yeah, Tetris Effect is absolutely amazing. <laughs> Yeah, even even without VR, Tetris Effect is a hell of a game. I mean, I'm basically a fan of whatever that team does. Uh, the only reason the puzzle game Luminez exists is because uh, they couldn't get the rights to Tetris at the time, so they thought, oh, let's make our own Tetris-style game. But Luminous is good in that it's... It's a little bit like Tetris, but... It's very different as well. So it doesn't feel like a rip-off or a clone, it's just really... A really good take on the block puzzles. And then they also did uh, Rez and Child of Eden. Rez, another game I've bought three times on multiple systems. Got it on PS2, Xbox 360, and I've got it on PS4. Still haven't gotten around to actually playing it on PS4. <laughs> okay, this guy is in the sewer somewhere. That's a dead end. Okay, down this way. You always get one of these every so often where the one enemy you have to take out is away on... You've gone all the way to the opposite end of the map. Ah, oh, there he is. Yay, another bounty done. So, we've got two more. Leave Belly out to last, because... He shouldn't be too bad, but... He is kind of our final... Our boss. <laughs> and I would rather get as much... As high level as I can before I take on the main bosses. Although Spider Queen wasn't too bad. Now this is a level I have an awful habit of going completely the wrong way. Not lucky yet. Not ready yet. Actually, I should maybe have a quick check on my equipment. I'll just take out the smog first. Let's have a quick look, see if there's any... Oh! Again, pretty big damage increase. Hmm. 
Yeah, it's got less stats, but it's got an intelligence boost, and intelligence boost is what we want because that immediately affects my damage output. So yeah, for wizards, you want an, any any equipment that boosts intelligence. For it's the same for witch doctor. I can't remember Necromancer, but for Crusader and Barbarian you want Strength Boosts and for Demon Hunter and Monk you want Dexterity Boosts. Just one of the reasons I played so much of this game was this is one of those games where I was like, oh, I've completed the story. I don't need to pay attention to what anyone's saying now. I will listen to podcasts while uh, playing this. And so I would literally spend an entire evening just catching up on a couple of podcasts and just playing this. <laughs> Boosting. Yeah, once we take him out, it'll be easier to deal with the others. <laughs> I appreciate your enthusiasm, Kovac. Keep it up. And another little advantage of uh, streaming this tonight is. It shows that I can sit and manage to stream a single game for two hours and not without issue. Because <laughs> I have kind of bounced about a bit in previous streams. The intention was kind of always to just do maybe only one or two games in each stream. But now that everything's kind of Everything's settled in, I know everything works okay. I just I, I checked through little bits of the last stream that I did on Monday. And yeah, the only thing that looked like it was maybe slightly causing a bit of trouble for the encoder was a uh, next machina which isn't a surprise because uh, the ridiculous amount of particles and cubes and explosions it has but even then it still looked fine so it was good I know like well I kind of now I don't have to worry about what game I'm streaming I know this the hardware and my internet can uh, cope with it tonight it was just a case of the computer suddenly deciding it wasn't going to give me any sound coming out of my head set but I managed to get that fixed with only a couple of minutes delay so I was okay I still managed to do the silly joke at the start as well And I will be honest, yes, I had forgotten just how clunky uh, Diablo and the PlayStation 1 felt. <laughs> but saying that clunky as it is, it's what got me into this style of game, so it did its job. <laughs> Ooh, that's good. We like chests with lots of stuff in them. Strongest 
Just head back to the trust room for a second. I just need to take a quick drink. My stomach feels strange. Did you forget to eat again? No. In fact, I decided to get the day's eating out of the way all at once. I kept at it until I couldn't take another bite. Oh, it sounds like you ate too much then. Being a mortal is very complicated. <laughs> Oh, Tyrael. Okay, oh, yes, plus damage, plus intelligence. Yeah, that'll do. Same damage, same attack speed. But boost my intelligence, so worth putting on. Mm, no, we'll leave the 15 on at the moment. Yeah, we'll put that on. Yeah, intelligence boost, put that on. Okay, normally I wouldn't equip the shield, but it says it'll boost my intelligence, so fair enough, it'll do until I get a proper item for that slot. Okay, go on. Go on. No, wrong. Wrong vendor. Right now, we we'll have to start repairing stuff every so often, but it's only 14 gold at the moment, so no problem. You can get a bit of armor later uh, that you can extract the power from that makes it so your items become indestructible, so you don't have to worry about uh, durability or having to repair your armor at all. But by the time you get to the end game like that, you kind of, well, I've got so much gold. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> Get salvage in and I'm not equipping it at the moment. We'll see, can he make me a focus yet? Train him once. No, it's still another couple of levels. So we'll go and see Gadala. I've only got 10 shards, so not worth it. So, go and take on Belial. This could get a little tricky, but we'll see. Yeah, but Belial's definitely not among my like top three most annoying bosses to fight against, but he can occasionally give you trouble. The three I kinda in my heart falls when I see them on the bounty list. Uh Aria. Uh Leah's mum. So a boss fight is I get, to say the least. Uh, and Urziel in the church in Westham. He is... I don't like fighting him. Well, actually, now that's a thought. <laughs> I haven't looked to see what the high-level bosses I need to defeat for Chapter 4 of the Season Mode are yet. Come on, come on, come on, we can do this. Yep. Oh. What we got? We've got legendary pants. 
So let's see what we've got here. Oh, they, they'll be quite useful. So yeah, uh, these are Pox Folds. Give me 53 armor, which is a lot higher than what I've got anyway. 18 intelligence, 19 vitality. Uh, plus 28 to my life per second. Some extra experience per kill. But the main thing is this ability here. So when three or more enemies are within 12 yards, you release a vile stench that deals 495% weapon damage as poison every second for five seconds to enemies within 15 yards. Now, most legendary items will have an ability, something like that on them. So when you've got multiple legendary items equipped, you can see how things can go. So that is getting equipped straight away. Yeah, no, we'll stick with the one that boosts our intelligence a bit. Because I think after we've fought Belial, I will exit this mode for now, and I will show you and explain my wizard, my other, my current wizard. <laughs> And if I mention anything that you're like, oh, what is that? Just ask and I'll try and explain as best I can. Because I realise I will probably mention something about the cube and I haven't explained the cube yet. <laughs> and depending on... Uh, depending on what parts of the game you've played, you might not have even found the cube yet, so... So now it's not so much this bit that's the problem. This bit's not really an issue. Especially when you oh Right, here's where it might get a bit tricky. Yeah, come on then. But as long as I keep... As long as I dodge well enough... I think we should be okay. Yeah, I think we're okay. <laughs> I think Belial's going down without too much trouble. There we go. Nice. And a bunch more items. Right, so if you've not been to Act 3, you might not have, you, I think the cube is in Act 3. But it also depends, I don't know if it shows up in the normal story. Because it's something that was kind of added later. But I, I, I'll explain it when I bring the wizard up, because I'll, I'll go home. Oh yeah, because he's there and, yeah, the thing doesn't appear to be there, so... I will show and explain it, but I'll get my I'll get my reward for Your it. Let me just sort through my stuff here. Yeah, I mean the majority of my learning how everything works has just been basically just been playing for that long. As I, say, I started on Xbox 360, so we're talking six or seven six years ago at least uh not 
I don't think we've got anything better there. Do any of these boost intelligence? Yes, that does, so we'll have that. Oh, yep. Yeah. New hat. Oh, that's good. That boosts my intelligence and attack speed, so that will be useful. Again, we've got more plans. So that's a green plan. So that's part of an armor set. Uh, the wall of bone. And the umber wolf. Yeah, I'm happy with the equipment I've got there. So I will just go and salvage everything I'm not keeping. And then repair everything. So that's level 13. Two sets of bounties done. Things haven't been too bad so far, so. But uh, I'll be continuing this week to week. Yeah, there he is, we're malfeasance. Yeah, colour color clashing all over the place. But. I will now bring up. My current wizard. Uh, playing on skill uh, difficulty level torment eight. So, right, uh, inventory. <laughs> so, uh, this is part of the Talvasha armor set. This is one of those armor sets, if you get more than one bit of it, depending on how many bits you've got equipped, it gives you some boosts. So this one, I've got six parts equipped at the moment. So if I've got two bits equipped, damaging enemies with arcane cold fire or lightning will cause a meteor of the same damage type to fall from the sky. And there's an eight second cooldown for each damage type. So about every eight seconds, it'll launch a meteor without any extra cost. With four equipped, arcane cold fire and lightning attacks each increase all my resistances by 25% for eight seconds. So it means if I'm firing cold stuff, that'll mean I've got 25% resistance against cold for eight seconds. So part of the, what you do with this build is you try and have one attack of each element type so if you're switching between them you've always got some of the resistances active it sounds more complicated than it actually is and six bits uh, increases my damage by uh, each attack increases my damage by two thousand percent for eight seconds uh arcane cold fire and lightning attacks each add one stack and at four stacks each thing extends the duration by two seconds up to maximum of eight seconds. Basically, an absolutely ridiculous damage boost. And that's just the boost from this armor set. <laughs> what I also have is Death Watch Mantle, which has a 32% chance to explode in a fan of knives for 750 to 950% damage when hit. So again, extra damage boost. This is essential to my build that I'm using. Nilfur's Boast, which increases the damage of Meteor by 600%. <laughs> so again, just a big boost to a specific attack. And if you build, if you set everything up around that, it gets ridiculous. Now you'll see these items have gems in them. Usually I just put in whatever gem boosts the main stat my character is using. So I've got intelligence boosted in as many bits of equipment I can. So at the moment I'm doing 476,000 attack, 10.7 million, yes, million defense, and 
2,170, no, yeah, 2,107,000 uh, vitality. Uh, what else to explain here? Some of these items are ancient, but uh, that's that only comes into effect really in very, very specific uh, circumstances, which I'm not using on this build. But there is a build that depends on how many ancient items you've got equipped. And they're basically just... Each legendary item has a, a small random chance of being ancient. And it just means it's, it's a little bit better than the uh, normal version. But I also have, and this is important to the wizard build, I've got uh, a top level gem, uh, is it Topaz, the yellow one, in my helmet, which reduces all my resource costs by 12.5%, which means everything costs less to fire off. In addition to this, and this is where I'll go and find this, this is Kanai's cube. This is, it. well, it is a game changer. You find it on, if I remember, yes, when you get to Act 3, I don't know if you'll get told to go to the ruins of Sheshkaron, but the cube is somewhere in there. So all you have to do is just find the cube, pick it up, bring it back. And then it'll appear here. And this lets you do all sorts of fancy things with uh, items. Yeah, I, I was trying to remember if it was actually in story mode or not. Because I've not played the story mode since the Xbox 360 version, to be honest. And this lets you do all sorts of things with items and materials. But the one that's important here is you can extract the powers from legendary items. So this sword, the Blood Brother, this grants a 50% chance to block attacks. Da, 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 da. I could use some of these materials to extract that power. And then what you do is, over here, you can pick one weapon weapon or shield power pick one armor power and then pick one power from uh, jewelry so what I've got here is th this is the most important one to my build and this just instantly makes wizard amazing while you're channeling Arcane Torrent, Disintegrate, or Ray of Frost, any kind of the beam attacks, for at least one second, the damage is increased by 150%, and it casts one of your other damaging power spenders every second. Now, this can be uh, the kind of uh, the black hole. Meteor is what I've got it set to. It can be the Hailstorm one. But basically for free, with no extra resource cost, you will chuck one of those powers out. This one's the least important at the moment, but it's helping a bit while well above 90% of your primary resource, which is my arcane power, but might be your hatred or your rage. All damage taken is reduced by 50%. Sometimes I have a thing that reduces resource costs by a ridiculous amount here, but I'm testing something new out. Convection of Elements, you gain 200% increased damage to one element for four seconds. And it rotates through all of the different elements. So any one time, one of the things you're doing will have 200% extra damage. And this is all on top of what my armor set does and on top of what the legendary items I've got equipped does so let's go and find and kill the butcher at torment level 8 
do do and here we go. Chosen goblins, chosen goblins. I am unstoppable. And yeah, the main thing to note here is I'm not hitting anything to fire off all these meteors. They are all happening because of the other things I've got equipped. So I'm basically like I'm a walking meteor strike. I feel like I'm going round in a circle, but that's okay. Off we go. So, yeah, and I've got... Not all on the PS4 version, but between this and the Switch version, I've got ridiculous builds like this for Barbarian and the Monk. And I've got one Demon Hunter build that's ridiculous like this as well, but I'm working on a new one of that. So yeah, once you get to the end game, it's just... Yeah. Need more time. And you will notice, again, because of the things I've got that reduce the cost of doing things, uh, my purple orb is hardly going down at all. And until I figured out the thing with the shields, this was a bit of a glass cannon, and that occasionally I would just walk into a room and Oomph. Just get not quite one shotted by something random, but <laughs> but since I've got this new build now, oh, that's something I forgot to explain. Aha. Oh, actually, I will explain quickly before we walk into this room. Yes, the passive skills I've got also help. Uh, this, when I take more than 15% of damage within one second, a bunch of my cooldowns get reset. This, uh, anything close to me gets more damage put against it. This, if I've not taken damage in the last five seconds, I gain a shield that absorbs 60% of my life in damage. So that's what's keeping that shield up all the time and that has just change things completely i'm not dying nearly as often now and this uh when i receive fatal damage you instead gain a shield equivalent to 400 percent of my life for five seconds so uh, this can happen once every 60 seconds so this stops one death every 60 seconds plus i've got all the paragon boosts which happen after you hit level 70 instead of leveling up every time you get a point to put into any of this stuff so i've got a massive intelligent boost i've got attack speed and critical hit chance boosted got armor and resist all boosted and resource cost reduction and life per hit all boosted and they carry across all your characters so if you've gotten one character past level 70 anytime you create a new normal character not hardcore or season mode uh you still get those points to spend on your character so every normal character i've got has now got 291 paragon levels 
So even if I started a new character, I can instantly put all these boosts on and that just helps you out at the start. It's handy to know if you want to just try another character out. So, this is the butcher's room. Let's see how quickly we'll get rid of him this time. Between two and five seconds, depending on the hit chances. And there he goes. And that's the ridiculousness of high level Diablo. <laughs> so eventually you will get to a stage where a character you've got can do that sort of run. As I said, I've got nice barbarian, uh, demon hunter and monk builds that are all very, very different, but all just have massive damage dealing and uh, protective responses. I need to go back. So yeah, I don't think I've ever seen that shield turn off since I started using this build. Well, and eventually you will find these, which are... You'll find this, which is all short random levels you can do to get uh, just equipment and boosts and things. And you'll get things called legendary gems that give you another extra different sort of booster things and you can level those up and they allow you to do all sorts of ridiculous things as well i don't use too many of them yet because i don't have many high level ones on here i had them done more on the switch but yeah <laughs> so that's how absolutely mental diablo 3 gets uh in the end game and it's one of the many many reasons i absolutely love it and yeah it cost me two and a half thousand gold to repair my equipment but i've got 82 million gold so i can afford it And yes, my armor colors are a direct reference to the Black Mages from the Final Fantasy games. Black Mages for life! So, I hope you all enjoyed tonight's stream. Uh, I will continue this Diablo Hardcore run next Friday. Uh, so the plan is to get all the way to level 70 take out Diablo and I think it's Malthiel and get that Platinum Trophy which will be my first Platinum Trophy there are a few games on Xbox 360 I've got all the all the points on but I've never done a PS4 game yet and also the shows yeah I can manage to do just sit and play and stream two hours of just one single game and handle that okay so that's that's good it bodes well because hopefully on Monday, health willing, uh, I will be starting a new playthrough of the excellent Assassin's Creed Syndicate Adventures in Victorian London. It's, as I said, it's my favourite Assassin's Creed just because of the setting, because it's all, well, it's not quite the days of Shout Homes, it's about 30 years too early for that, but it's all that sort of era, you know, giant rats in the sewers. All that sort of thing. Uh, you bump into Charles Darwin and Charles Dickens and Alexander Graham Bell and all those sorts of people. So, all, all great stuff. But, <laughs> yeah, core blimey, Governor. Oh, it's a jolly old day with you, Evie Fry. There will be lots of bad Cockney accents and jokes, I am sure. And uh, some some uh, bad old Cockney sing-alongs at points. Because uh, uh, I checked and the game, the, the Ubisoft Club tells me I've played the game for 16 hours. It feels like a lot more than that, but 
in a good way. But I, w- I was thinking of streaming one Assassin's Creed game, and I thought, well, this is the one I really, really like, just because of the setting and the history of the setting. So I, I don't mind replaying and starting from the start again. So that's that's what the Monday night streams are going to be, at least for a while. And this will be Friday nights for a while. But also, if I just decide to uh, randomly stream, if I'm if I'm doing some monster hunt, I'm hunt some night, and I just decide to randomly, to randomly, I might as well stream them. Then I might just show up some other evenings, just doing other little bits and pieces, just to. Uh, as always, just depending on how my health and my fatigue. As long as I'm not feeling fatigued, I can cope with this okay. As always, uh, the stream will be archived on YouTube. Uh, as far as I'm aware, we got away with this, with the messing about with the music on Crazy Taxi a couple of streams ago. I don't think it got muted at all anywhere, so that's good. So, I will see you all again on Monday for some adventures in Victorian London. And uh, next Friday for some more Diablo. Uh, thanks for joining in uh, if you're watching live thanks if you're watching the video on demand or if you're watching on youtube hope you enjoyed it and i'll see you all again later bye